Good afternoon, and welcome to episode 429, and simply put, there is no there, there. I'm going to talk about internal support and self-love, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, before I start with that, let me, let me choose myself as per usual. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which drives my daily talks, because every day I do these talks called Messages to the Masculine to inspire the feminine heart. Make sense? And today's episode is number 429, because I've got plenty of stuff to talk about, it seems. And let's speak about things about relationships, romance, masculine feminine polarity, men and women, challenges, including Me Too once in a while, and narcissism recently. So there's lots of stuff to talk about. And today's topic, I'm... Um, going to play with is basically around self-support, self-love, because I've talked about this a while ago, but I'm in the middle of right now creating something which I'll tell you about in a minute. And I wanted to play with it, since the title is, There Is No There There, because this was a great thing to say, because people go, what? And the recognition is that we keep um, putting off being happy, putting off having love, putting off being sufficient because we externalize what we want out there somewhere. So it's like, it's out there, it's not here. And I'm trying to, I'm to telling you is, there is no there, there. What's actually going on is distraction. And also, to be honest, I would say, probably a lot to do with the way that advertising and marketing works in this, in this, well, say in this country, in this world, where it's always about selling you the next thing that you should get, because you're not gonna be whole until you get the next car, the next suit, the next furniture, the next computer, the next phone nowadays the way the marketing is set up is that you are somebody lacking something to get what they give you or sell you or market to you and so the wiring gets installed from a very young age that we need more things and more stuff you know the, the usual stuff from out in the world than we do sorry we need more stuff from out in the world to feel sufficient to feel whole and when it comes to relationships that exacerbates the whole paradigm because it puts you in a place of codependence and I've talked about this before quite often in fact the trap that people fall into in a relationship that somehow that other person is going to make them feel whole let me rephrase it another way that other person is going to make you feel whole because the trap you may fall into like I used to not to say not anymore but I, I'm the jury's out on that one I'm working on that one still because it's always a lesson for all of us being self-sufficient is one of these challenges because we are people that um, <laughs> we, we relapse into all behaviors is one of the challenges um, so the point I want to make in today's broadcast by the way it's a weekend broadcast so it's a bit more relaxed at least I feel that way although stuff is con it's, it's been a busy day for work so what's a weekend nowadays when you're an entrepreneur it's 24 7 so in the context of this um, conversation we are trained by society and for many of us by our parents and grandparents before them to look at relationships through the lens through the lens of being codependent and it's not overtly that but we're set up with the way things are to look at the other person as making us feel better or to make us feel loved or to feel whatever it is that we don't feel we can do on our own and it's a, it's a vicious cycle because that's it's actually one of the main reasons why heartbreak is so painful because all those things we put on the other person's um, plate to deliver to us when they break up with us and leave, they take it with them. So suddenly we're without what we didn't have before. It's all a lie, but we pretend to put our eggs in that basket saying, you upset me because you took away the loving that I thought you were gonna give me. And so we're in this continual cycle, this vicious cycle basically of, la of, lo of loss, of losing out, of actually being heartbroken because we don't learn early on, rarely so anyway, to truly love ourselves. And it's a a weakness in the model that we're taught because the truth is we are worthy we are deserving we are um, loving beings as we are we don't need anybody else we in reality yes we are social creatures we want to have other people around us and most of us want to be in relationships so there is that part too but that's additive not filling something that we think we're missing and so when we come from a place of feeling like we're missing something we're guaranteed guaranteed to come up short because we're actually looking for someone to fill a gap we think we have, which we don't, so we end up with this pressure inside. 
And at times it can be very satisfying to have someone take up that slack that we're not doing ourselves. But as time goes by, it can be wearing. And on top of that, as I said, when they leave, because they will, or you will leave, because that will happen either way, you are both in this place of feeling drop, feeling let down, that's the word, let down, that, or phrase. Because that's, that's the challenge of relationships. Truly, if we really loved ourselves and a partner broke up with us, we might feel some emotional upset, but we'd actually be okay because we already love ourselves. And this is probably one of the biggest lessons we can all learn. If you're in a relationship now, or if you're single, or if you recently broke up, whatever part of the framework you're in, there's always room to turn up the juice on self-love. And so when we lack that place of complete self-love, we will carry more wounds when we get broken up with. It's just the way it is. Sorry, kids. It's just kind of the way life is. So the opportunity, the opportunity is to practice self-love all the time. And I mean this from the place of self-support. Because some people look at it and say, well, if you're, you're too full of yourself, then you're being narcissistic or you're being so egotistical. Well, yes, but I'm not speaking about that. In fact, those people, to be honest, are more lacking than most other people. Yes, more lacking. Those narcissistic people are walking around with a void inside they can't feel because the wiring inside their psychology is such that they believe that only feeding from somebody else will fill them up. Most of us carry that wound inside, but not to the extreme that narcissists do. So just be aware of that one. The egotistic side, I want to make sure I do cover both pieces, is driven by people who are really caught up in this wiring, this um, framework that somehow they have to keep proving themselves, keep making a difference, keep making them better, keep showing off, keep proving themselves to be more, all this, this, as you can tell, it's like get me out of breath, because that's what it is. It's a continual push, push, push to make themselves feel better because again, they're carrying a wound inside that's not been healed. When you truly love yourself, when you really, truly, authentically love yourself, the ego doesn't, have, doesn't come into play because you're not dealing with up here, you're dealing with down here. Self-love is one of the best practices I know of that anybody can do. It doesn't cost anything. It's relatively easy to do, although I actually, I'm actually writing out your program for this to make sure people who get stuck and get through this, which is kind of crazy, but I'm thinking, I think something that easy requires instructions. <laughs> but that's what people want, so that's what I'm creating. Um, I'll tell you about that in a moment again. So it's something that we can all do, and yet we don't or the majority of people don't. Some people do out there. Some people have got wise this early on, and I'm, I'm getting more practice than myself, because first of all, it lets you off the hook. When you're really practicing self-love, you actually are more compassionate towards yourself, so you don't punish yourself for making mistakes, because the biggest problem when you make a mistake is to make sure that mistake is suffered. The reality is when we make mistakes all the time, we're human, we have this journey through life where things will keep happening to us. So when we have mistakes that happen, because they do, the lesson we can learn from two-year-olds is to get up, brush yourselves off, and then get on with life. If you notice with kids, and this, this is a good thing to remember, that's where I'm coming up to, so I'm going to go there. With young kids especially, when they fall down, which happens frequently with young kids because they're learning how to get coordination and move around, they have this habit, especially if you watch, you watch from, if you observe from a distance, and you're not part of the immediate family because it's actually easier when you're outside watching versus your own kids. Notice that when they get up, they're usually fine until one of two things happens. Actually, until... Yeah, one of two things happen. I'm trying to think it's one or two. One of those is the parents rush in and really shine, show, show so much grief and upset for what happened. And so the kid would go, I'll take some of that, and cries. The kids do this. I mean, it's fun to watch. The second thing that happens kind of some of the time is when the kid doesn't get attention, when the kid gets up, looks around and see other people not taking attention, they may feel like they want to get more attention, which case they'll cry to get attention. There's two different ways that it happens, and it does happen. I'm watching it with kids, and you can see it too, especially the younger ones. So what's it got to do with anything? Let me tell you. <laughs> that need for attention that gets, gets seeded, gets planted at a very young age, oftentimes because parents create that with their children, becomes something that through adult life is a Perpetual, perpetual hunger that never gets filled. It's in a, um, an endless pit that keeps dropping things in. 
So the truth of self-love is it can heal that. Well, counseling and coaching can heal that too, more effectively. But if you're someone who feels like you want to have a better handle on life, a better handle on love, and a better handle on meeting people, the first step I recommend highly is that self-love practice. The more you love yourself, the more you bring it home so it's not out there, it's in here. First, we have control over that because you don't need anybody else to do this. And secondly, it will start to make you more attractive. One of the best kept secrets of self-love is that it makes you more attractive to other people. If you're single, that sounds like a damn good idea. <laughs> so, I'll give you the practice, I, I, I'll give you the shorthand of it, but I've got a, basically a, a four-page um, explanation now, which is getting quite long-winded. I'm going to do an audio version as well. Um, I'll, tell that, I'll tell you about that in a minute. So, the homework I recommend, this is what I recommend for you to practice, to participate in, and to do for yourself, is to, I use, I use the, um, the template of a mirror exercise, which means using a mirror. Duh. <laughs> But if you take the time to do this, and, again, and I've talked about this many times before on the broadcast, but I haven't talked about it for the last week or so, so it's time to bring it out, is to speak into your own um, receptivity in the mirror. So look in the mirror, no distractions, do it in the five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, it's when it takes, just 10 minutes a day. Look in your eyes in the mirror and say to yourself when you look in the mirror, I love you. Say it so you feel it, receive it and own it. And then what's wonderful is you start to feel it back. Now, there's more to it than that, and I've explained in my, my little um, workbook. The power of this, to simply do that, and to do this, by the way, oh yeah, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, do this for a month, 30 days. The power of this will change your life. It's probably one of the most profound exercises that people do, yet it's so simple, people think, oh, it doesn't make a difference. Don't need to do this. Well, reality is, you don't know if you've done it, or yet, don't know if you've tried it, let's put it that way. So practice this. And if you want to find out more about what I'm offering, which I'm finishing up now, but you can still get the web page, I think it's up and running, I think. I'm basically selling um, an audio, a guided, a guided, what I call it, self-love mirror meditation practice, as I'm calling it. So if you go to my website, which is barrysilver.com, click on, and, uh, actually I haven't had the web page visible yet, but it'll be, a, it'll be it will be self-love, and I'll be the, suffix, you know, barrysilver.com forward slash self love is where you find more information about it. I'm going to set it up for like 27 bucks, something low, uh, but it'll be a audio you can play to support yourself because the written thing will be great to have as well, but it's hard to reference that when you're looking in the mirror and read, read look, you know, this sort of thing. So the audio is intended to support you in having more love in your life. So there's that. On other, in other news and other reminders, um, if you want to find out more about my work and how I can help you really heal, own, and love yourself and attract an amazing relationship, I do offer a discovery session as my gift, my daily offering as it were. If you go to my website, again, barryselby.com, and click on Let's Chat on the left-hand side of the menu, you can put in, put in a date, sorry, you can choose a date or a calendar moment, get on my calendar, well, and again, on that page, click, get a, choose a spot on my calendar, fill out the form, and sign up. It's a 30-minute conversation, my gift to you. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is number 429 in my daily series of talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. They are on my business page on Facebook more collectively than on my personal page because I have other stuff on there. So if you're watching this on Facebook, you can watch it in the replay on, well, it'll be on my business, my business page, which is the best place to find it, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. You can also find them on YouTube, but they're also populating quite busily now. If you go to um, the channel, which is Barry Selby, the playlist is message, Messages from the Masculine. And also now they're appearing in my podcast. So if you go to iTunes and click on Messages from the Masculine or search for Messages from the Masculine, you'll find my podcast where I'm starting to add these slowly but surely to that library so you can listen to them when you're driving or some other places where you can't watch and enjoy them that way too. I think that's about it. This is a Saturday broadcast. I'm trying to keep it short because I'm actually in the middle of creating this self-love practice um, process. So with that, I think I wish you well. You've got some homework if you want to take it on. If you have any questions, comments, please put them in the broadcast. I'll answer them when I sign off. And if you want help, reach out. Don't keep it to yourself. All right? So with that, um, I wish you well. Have a great time. Take care of yourselves and practice self-love. It will change your life. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.